So I need to pass in the input and then the instruction is I recall that the instruction was detect the sentiment of the tweet, a project with great prospects and opportunities. This should be a positive sentiment. Let's run through the model. Hey everyone, my name is Venelin and in this video we are going to fine tune the Llama 7 billion model using Alpaca Wara. We are going to create a custom data set that contains tweets for Bitcoin sentiment. We are going to convert this data set from a CSV file into a JSON and use it to fine tune the Llama model. Let's get started. The data set that I'm going to use is called BTC Tweets Sentiment and it's on Kaggle. I'm going to link it into the tutorial that is also going to be available with this video. In, in here we have BTC Tweets Sentiments. So it looks like the authors had pretty much scraped around 50k of tweets and they have among with the tweet text, uh, they have also the sentiment of the tweets. So I'm going to basically use this data set, but I'm going to apply some pre-processing. In essence, I'm going to remove the retweeted tweets. And also I'm going to remove all the tweets that contain a link. The Alpaca Wara repository is actively maintained and uh, I'm going to show you the probably the easiest way to fine tune the Alpaca War models. And uh, it is right from the readme of the project. Uh, you can go here and they have a pretty good example calling fine-tune.py. And in here you specify the name of the model or the base model, a Llama 7B for the 7 billion parameters. And then some data path path to your data set. Also, they have an output directory. So this is pretty much the fastest way to fine tune the model. But in this video, I'm going to show you what is actually behind the fine tune script, which is this one. And I'm going to go take some bits of those of this script and show you step by step how you can implement the fine tuning process. To fine tune our model, we are going to need a data set and Alpaca Wara is using a somewhat custom format for that. So I'm going to need to convert the tweets and their sentiment data into a format that is suitable for fine tuning with Alpaca Wara. I have just created this notebook and in it I've started with essentially listing all of the requirements from the Alpaca Wara repo. And here you can see that we have bits and bytes, the data sets from Hugging Face, also PEFT, which we're going to use for easier or faster training, the latest version of the Transformers library, Torch 2.0 or PyTorch 2.0, Sentence Piece, since this is required for the tokenizer. And then I'm also installing TensorBoard X and uh, Gradio. These are pretty much all of the requirements from the Alpaca War repo, but I've just fixed it, fixed the versions of those. So other than that, I have these imports and we're going to use pretty much all of them. Uh, here, some of the more important ones are the Wama tokenizer and Wama for causal learning, uh, language modeling, sorry. Uh, also, we have the PEFT that we are going to use again for the faster training or fine tuning. Also, I am importing some styling and finally I am looking for the CPU or a CUDA device. And in this case, I'm using a Google Coop notebook that has a CUDA device. Next, I'm going to download the data, which I've already told you it is actually pre-processed quite a bit compared to the Kegel data that I've shown you. And uh, here we have this CSV file in it. I'm going to and I'm going to load that file using pandas. It's called Bitcoin sentiment tweets. Let's see what it contains. So it has the date of the tweet, the tweet text and then the sentiment. And let's see what types of values do we have for the sentiment and how much of each do we have. So I'm going to essentially call the value counts. 
So you can see that we have pretty much a roughly equal amount of neutral and positive sentiment and then the negative ones are very rare uh, like one fourth let me just show you this uh, in a bit more nicer format yeah you can now visually see how much the positive and the neutral tweets are actually overwhelming the negative ones so at least at this time the sentiment for bitcoin was quite positive or bullish one might say so next i'm going to change the format of the data set we are going to be required to pass in a json file and i'm going to convert this csv into a json file so to do that i'm going to create a function called sentiment score to name in which i'm going to essentially convert 0 1 or minus 1 into text so in here i'm going to pass in the float of the text and then i'm going to return a string so if the score is above one i'm going to return positive if the score is less than zero i'm going to return negative otherwise i'm going to return neutral and i'm going to create the date set data and this will be essentially a list comprehension so here i'm going to iterate over every dictionary in the data set and i'm going to convert the data frame to dictionary so here i need to pass in three different keys the instruction which is going to be a constant and i'm going to name it detect the sentiment of the tweet next i have the input which is going to be the text of the tweet and the output is going to be the result of the sentiment score to name function and i'm going to call this with the sentiment let me run this and let's see the first row of the data okay so we have an instruction an input and an output and this is the required format of the data set that the alpaca wara is using so we're going to need to save this in a json file and use it as a data set for the uh, fine tuning so i'm going to call this alpaca bitcoin sentiment dataset.json and i'm going to write the file and i'm going to dump the json into the file so here yeah we should have this json file which contains the instructions the inputs and the outputs now that we have a data set we need a base model and in this case alpaca wara is using the wama metas model so i'm going to need to initialize it and use the pre-trained weights from the hugging face repository both for the tokenizer and the model and this is pretty easy to do i need to first start by specifying the name of the base model and this is pretty much the same model that we've used in the previous video this is the repo in hugging face it is essentially using the wama 7 billion parameters next i need to initialize the model and i'm going to use the wama for causal language modeling and i'm going to use the base model here then i want this to be loaded in a 8-bit tensors since this will save us a lot of space and probably speed up the training process then i'm going to specify the torch types that we are going to use for 16 and then device map auto so this will make sure to put 
the model on the GPU. Next, I'm going to initialize the tokenizer. So this will be the Wama tokenizer. Let's see if we get some hints. Tokenizer. Again from pre-trained. The base model. And here uh, we want to change the path token ID to zero. Uh, this is pretty much done with the idea that I'm taking this from the fine tuning. So next I want to set a padding side to the left. I'm not sure if this isn't the default value. And this should go ahead and start downloading the very large model that is contained within the Lama 7 billion parameters. So this should take some time, about three and a half minutes. But after this is done, we are like getting the model and the tokenizer. So they are loaded and they are pretty large. So that's all right. Next, I'm going to load the data set from the JSON file. We have the model, now the JSON file for the data files. And here I'm going to call the Alpaca Bitcoin sentiment dataset JSON file. This should load it. All right, so if I have a look at the train data here, we see that we have around 1,900 uh, 1, examples in our dataset. The authors of the GitHub repo have implemented this prompt template. And from here, you can see that there is this text, which is essentially the template. Behold is an instruction that describes a task paired with an input that provides further context. context. Write a response that appropriately completes the request and then the instruction, the input and the response. But in the previous examples of this repo, we had this function called generate prompt, which essentially contains the same thing. And I'm going to paste it here. I find this much more understandable. So we have pretty much the same thing. It's accept essentially a data point that contains the instruction from here, the input and the output. So I'm going to run this function and then I'm also going to paste in two of the other functions provided by the repo and we're going to go through those. So we have the tokenize and then generate and tokenize prompt and here we have this cutoff len which I'm going to define as 256 so the cutoff len since the tokenizer and the context of the model is limited. We're going to limit this to 256. So what is happening here? We're generating a full prompt and then tokenizing it. So I'm essentially getting this and then using the tokenizer on it. So we are running with a maximum cutoff length, no padding and not returning, uh, specifying a non-returning of tensor types. So we have the truncation set to true here. And then if this is larger than the cutoff length, essentially we're cutting it off. And other than that, I'm uh, other authors are also applying the labels to the result using the input IDs. So essentially the labels are the input IDs from the tokenizer right here. So this is pretty standard if you understand the transformers library and how tokenizers work. Next, I'm going to get the data and split it into a train in validation sets. The train that we've talked about here, I'm going to call train test split. And the test size is going to be 200 examples. I want this to be shuffled and I want to set a seed of 42. And then for the train data, I'm going to take the train part of this. Let me actually run through this. 
and show you what we have thus far. So this is doing the split. And now we have 200 examples in the test or the validation set. And then uh, 100 and roughly seven, uh, 1,700 examples in the train set. So for the train data, I'm going to take the train split, shuffle it, and then call generate and tokenize prompt. So this should run through the function that we described above. And then for the validation data, I'm going to test the test split and call the same thing. Now that the data set is completely prepared, we also need to prepare our model for 8-bit training. We're going to use the Wara helpers from the PEFT library and do all of the necessary configuration in order to start the training process. I'm going to continue with pasting in some configuration constants and some of those are related to Wara and Wara we are going to use by essentially calling the Wara config. Other than those which are Wara related, we have a batch size and micro batch size. We are going to use a micro batch size for a uh, warning rate, which is again taken from the repo. And I'm going to train for 300 steps. Uh, you might want to increase this if you are getting still better results. But for the purposes of this video, I've trained my model for only 300 steps. Of course, if you have much uh, better GPUs, you might want to train for longer. Uh, also, if you have much larger data set, you might want to train again for longer. And I'm training on a single GPU, so you might need to adapt or use the fine tune script from the original repo if you want to train on multiple GPUs. So next, I'm going to start by preparing the model for 8-bit training, prepare model for, eight, for int 9, 8 training. I'm going to call this and then create a configuration of Wara config. And this is using the PEFT library from Hugging Face. And Wara is an acronym for low rank adoption of large language models. And there is a paper which is linked from the PEFT repo right here from the hugging face and if you're curious about that you might want to have a bit uh, larger or deeper dive into what this is but if you go through the source code you will find that war config is essentially extending the path config and here we have r which is attention dimension which in our case is going to be eight we have the target modules uh, we are going to essentially uh, fine-tune the query and the values projections of the transformer. Then we have uh, alpha parameter for scaling. At least it looks like that. And then we have a dropout. In our case, we're going to use a 5% dropout. And these are pretty much the only uh, parameters that we're going to use in our case. So let's continue with the notebook. So the rate is going to be in our case, R, uh, 8. So I'm getting all of those values from the fine-tune script. And the dropout. I don't want this to have any bias, again taken from the fine tuning script. And then the task type is going to be causal language modeling. All right, so I'm going to apply this config to the model by calling get path model and adding the config. And finally, I'm going to print the trainable parameters. Let's see if we get Probably not, no completions here. So I have a typo, all right, let's run this. 
Yeah, and as you can see, we are training roughly 0 0.06 of the of the possible parameters, which are nearly 7 billion, it looks like. So we are fine tuning a uh, lot of what smaller model compared to the original WAMA model. To train the model, we are going to use the Hugging Face Transformers trainer. And this one accepts a lot of training arguments, which we are going to use to configure the training process itself. I'm going to start with the training arguments and I'm going to create an instance of that from the Transformers training arguments. Let's see if we get any help. Probably not. That's all right. So we are going to specify the micro batch size using the per device batch size. Then the gradient accumulation steps, which we calculated based on the batch size and the micro batch size. I'm going to specify the number of warm-up steps for the learning rate and this is again taken from the Alpaca Aura repo. Next I'm going to specify the number of training steps. In our case this will be 300, the learning rate. Then I'm going to specify that I want a mixed precision training. I want this to be logging on every 10 steps. The optimizer is going to be Adam with weight decay fix from PyTorch. And I want to strategy to have a evaluation strategy on the number of steps and also st save checkpoints on the number of steps and eval every run the evaluation every 50 steps and also save on 50 steps. The output directory of the experiment is going to be the output dir, which is going to be experiments. And I want to save at most three checkpoints. I want the trainer to load the best model at the end. And I want the results to be reported to TensorBoard. Tensor board. All right, let's run this. Gradient accumulation steps. Okay, this looks all right. Uh, next, I'm going to create a data collator for the batches. Data collator for sequence to sequence since we are doing such a model and here I'm going to pass in the tokenizer path to multiple of 8 which is the number of elements that I want to have in the batch so the return tensors are going to be PyTorch and then I want to apply a padding at the end so the data collector is done and next uh, we are going to use both the training, uh, the data collator and the training arguments into a trainer. So here I'm going to start with the model. Training data set is going to be the train data. The eval data set is going to be the validation data. The arguments for the training are going to be the training arguments and the data collator is going to be the one that we created. Let's run this. Okay, so the trainer is looking good. Uh, next, I'm going to say that the model is not going to be used cache. This is again taken from the original script. And I'm going to replace some of the state dict using the peft model state dict so i'm going to save 
the old state or the current state and I'm going to apply the path model state dict so here I'm essentially passing some parameters this is again taken directly from the repo so I'm going to take get path model state dict and here I'm going to pass in the model and the old state dict Finally, I'm going to call the get method of this model. And finally, I'm going to compile the model using PyTorch 2.0. Hopefully this will speed up somewhat the training. Then I'm going to call the trainer train and I'm going to save the pre-trained model into the output directory once the training is complete. Let's run this and see if we have. So I'm going to take this in order to be sure that I've completely did this correctly because I might have some errors within that. And while the training might be a bit slow, you will see the start of the progress right here. And this should take a lot of time. Of course, that depends on your device in order to completely train this model. So this is the training progress from my model that I've also uploaded to Hugging Face models. Uh, and you can see the evaluation was is decreasing uh, pretty rapidly right here. And on the 300 step, we have somewhat of a plateau right here. Maybe if you have more data, this should get even better. But I've also included this model into the hugging face and it's called Alpaca Bitcoin Tweets Sentiment. And it's available from my account. And we're going to continue with this model. Now that you have a completely fine-tuned model, we need to have a look at how you can use it. I'm going to use the generate pi script from the original Alpaca Wara repo, but with our custom model. And we're going to see if our new model is actually able to detect the sentiment of uh, some Bitcoin tweets. So the first thing that I need to do is to go ahead and clone the original repo. And then I'm going to enter the directory. And then I'm going to check out a specific commit since I want to be uh, since I want this to be reproducible. And yeah, this should give you this directory right here, which is the repo at this particular um, commit. Other than that, I'm going to follow the, the prescription for generating the model from here, but I'm going to change that to our own custom model. Let me close this for you. And to do that, I'm going to call this script generate.py. What in 8-bit. I want the base model to be the one that we specified in our fine tuning, which is this one. So this is the base model and then the water weights. I want this to be my custom model and I want this to be a shareable script in Gradio and I just need to start this and this should take some time 
to first load the llama model and then create a shareable link. Once the loading of the generate script is complete, uh, you should get this live link. So if you open up this, you should get this interface. Uh, not exactly this because I've changed it a bit, but yeah, so it's Bitcoin sentiment analysis with Alpaca. And let's try this with this tweet, which I took originally. So I need to pass in the input and then the instruction is recall that the instruction was detect the sentiment of the tweet, a project with great prospects and opportunities. This should be a positive sentiment. Let's run through the model. And sometimes you might get some errors, but in this case, uh, it appears to be this to be a positive sentiment. Let's try another tweet that I took earlier. Get ready to take short positions. Let's see what this is a neutral sentiment. That's all right. And then one popular tweet with Bitcoiners. So BTC 2023 bull market powered by foot. Let's see. So again, this is a positive sentiment, which is very good. And now I have some live tweets. Let's try this one. If you think the run of for BTC is over, good luck. Let's see what our model thinks about this. So it thinks that this is a negative sentiment. Let's try another one. So we have Bob Lucas. So let's try something. Did you know that as soon as BTC broke the SP in the Gaussian channel, the bull market started. Let's see what our model thinks of this part of the tweet. So this is positive. Okay, looks quite impressive actually. In this video, we've seen how we can fine tune the Wama model using the Alpaca War repository. We've taken the long road and pretty much went step by step using a custom code that is based on the fine tune script from the original repo. We fine tuned the model on a set of tweets that contain Bitcoin sentiment and we've run the fine tuned model using the Gradio app from the original repository and so the sentiment predictions based on some tweets and some live tweets as well. Guys, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you very much for the all of the comments and likes and the watch of the previous video. Please like, share and subscribe. I'll also include a complete text tutorial that is going to be also including a Google Co-op notebook. Thanks for watching. Bye.